So our fair is about social justice and it's about what we um, as a society can do to make sure that all genders, all races, all ages are equally represented and equally, they all equally feel safe and secure inside of our society because that is one of the biggest problems that we have. Um, it's very, you know, there's so many, there's so much racial tension between groups that it's hard for everybody to feel um, safe and secure. And so what we're doing is we are bringing awareness to the general population to say, hey, these are all different factors of um, what's wrong with social justice, and so this is what we're doing to bring awareness. What's the name of the class, the title? Uh, Multicultural Gender Studies. Okay. Um, do you mind saying a first name and how old you are? My name is Diana Rodriguez and I am 18 years old. My name is Moria Silva and I'm 18 years old. My name is Lucia and I'm 18. My name is Jacob and I am 17. Oh, you're the baby. My name is Zara and I'm 18. Uh, my name is Chris and I'm 18 years old. So what did you, from your research, what did you learn about how to make social change? How not just to research it, but make sure it happens? Spread awareness upon the, our community. Like basically, there are a lot of, most people that we have come across for our project, like for human trafficking, they didn't know too much about it. But we gave them, during the presentation, basically told them ways how they can spread awareness. Like, the ribbon I'm wearing, blue is the uh, color for human trafficking awareness, and some other groups have their own ways of showing awareness. Like, for a group over there, they're on hate crimes in the LGBTQ community, and they're basically, they, they have their own ways of showing awareness. And I think that if we can spread awareness on these issues, then we will achieve social justice. What do you think is going to happen? I'm addressing the group under our new president. There's going to be a lot of tension between groups at first, but my hope is that things things are going to change within his presidency, but hopefully that the racial tensions don't get the best of us and that we don't cause civil conflict in our states. And that's the biggest problem. I also believe that people will stop caring more about the minority groups because once the president comes in, I feel like they're going to go out. And a lot of the minority groups are the victims of trafficking, so we need to get more involved with those groups and you know what's happening to them and ways to help them. Anybody else on the Trump effect? I think, honestly, sometimes it, the media does miscommunicate information. Like, I know a lot of members of the LGBTQ community are afraid that Donald Trump's presidency will have a great effect on him. But I know during the um, Republican National Convention, he did say that he would support the community. And since the Republican Party is known for not being a total su being supportive of that group, a lot of people did respond positively, and he was actually happy that he was receiving support. So I do think the media does try to sway their views on politicians just to um, kind of like deceive the public and I think that's a big problem because the media does tend to be biased a lot and a lot of people do not trust the media. Um, people say that your generation is apathetic, apolitical, you guys didn't turn out to vote which is why Trump got elected. What do you say to those kind of charges about your generation? I believe a lot of people took this election as a joke and were filling out names of different people that weren't even running. So I think that affected a lot. They thought it was a joke? Yeah, because a lot of people were just like, oh, I'm just going to vote for Trump because I know he's not going to win, but he ended up winning. Oh, you mean they just did it like a... Willy nilly. Willy nilly. They didn't, take, Whoa. they didn't like either politician, and like for Trump, a lot of people didn't think he was going to win, but he ended up winning, so they were shocked. What do you say about the charges that your generation is apathetic, self centered, just wants to get likes on their social it depends, media page? It, it honestly depends on how they were raised and where they were raised. Like my parents raised me to care about everybody, care about everybody before they care about myself. Mm. But everybody else's feelings before I put myself in, like, before I put myself in. So for me, like I'm very open to meeting new people and learning about people's um, backgrounds and like where you're from, like why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you the way that you are? And so it, it really depends on how you were raised. And so if your parents raised you like to say, hey, your likes on your Instagram page or your Facebook page, that's what's going to get you out there. Like, you want to be like 
Miley Cyrus or whoever. Like you want to be like these people, then our generation is going to sway more towards those people because that's what we've been told. Like be who you aspire to, like look up to. So you're saying parents are the key influence? Yeah. Uh, parents what you, and the media. Yeah. What do you think? about your generation, is it apolitical and apathetic or is it involved in caring? I think it just depends on the person. It, in, in general, of the people that you know? I don't know, most people I know, they, 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 they tend to care more about that. About the political. They, I don't really know how many people that don't care about it. Oh, interesting. Um, there's a professor at San Diego State that says your generation is really much more self centered and narcissistic than other generations. Do you think she's right? I do. I actually completely disagree with that. I think our generation has um, been like one of the most like open-minded to like just new ideas. I think we've been really like accepting to like different kinds of people and like willing to learn about different cultures compared to like like um, like to my grandparents are kind of like completely different than like I'm like willing to learn about new cultures. And so I disagree with that idea that we're like self-centered or anything. I think we're actually really open-minded. I kind of disagree with you, but I'm mainly focusing on like younger people. I think kids growing up today are becoming more narcissistic and self-centered because they look at the media and they're not just the media, but like celebrities and they're easily influenced. Like people like Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, they, those are role models for those people and they're bad choice for role models because they do all these bad things and they, when they look at these people, they're thinking, oh, if Kim K can do that, I can do that, so it must be okay for me to do it in society. But that's not the case. So when you when they say that we're narcissistic and self-centered, I think they're getting that from our celebrities and our kids are learning that and they're thinking it's okay to be narcissistic and self-centered. She's basing it on a, a narcissistic personality inventory that's given to thousands and thousands of students. So that's what she's basing it on. But I think it's true that your generation is more self-confident. Yes. You're taught are. to have self-esteem. So, but there is a difference between self-confidence and self-esteem and being narcissistic like Trump. You can tell I love him. <laughs> um, w what about the reputation that this school has of being a party school and that people, you know, are drinking Thursday, Friday, Saturday night and just care about partying? You're going to have parties everywhere. They're going to be everywhere. You're going to have, especially at a college, it, not even this college, it doesn't matter about where you are, you're going to have, there's going to be drinking, there's going to be rape, there's going to be all of these terrible things at whatever college you go to. It doesn't matter if you're here in Chico or if you're in Indiana. Whatever college you're at, the kids are going to, let's say, act out because they don't have a, a parent to say, no, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. No, this is bad. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you have to stay in. They enjoy the sense of freedom that they have. I think that's one thing a lot of students are, we enjoy about college is that we're away from our parents. Like, I live eight hours, if I drove home, I live eight hours away, and as being that far away from home, I kind of like the sense of freedom I have, but I also have to remember that my parents are the reason I got sent here, so I can't give in to temptation that college life will bring me because I know that they're the reason I'm here, so I can't disappoint them. Yeah, I agree because I feel like no matter where you go, you're always going to be exposed to parties and all that, but it's, you're the one that has to be in charge of yourself, and you're the one that decides whether you come here for education or to party. So, just believing in yourself and believing that you can actually get to where you want to get, and the party scene is just going to go away. So, how much time do you spend on social media? Let's just go across the room, on your cell phone and social, in front of an electronic screen, average a day. I don't really get to spend much time. Well, I used to be like so, so like into social media and stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is, it's just it's just a waste of time. Like, you're like you're trying to like basically make yourself um, like 
you're trying to better make yourself from like another person's point of view. When in reality, you should just be focusing on yourself and where you are. So that's why like I stopped like kind of interacting with social media because there's no there's no real point. To it. It's just um, who, has, who has this, who has this. You're just basically bragging about your life. And if you stop focusing on that, then there's more things to like to, to enjoy rather than just being on social media. So. How many hours of sleep do you average a night during the school week with homework? Uh, I would say like five to six. Six, five to six, sometimes seven. And then you catch up on the weekends? Yes, for me I do. I make it a priority to sleep early because I'm kind of just used to doing that. So I kind of don't spend a lot of time on social media just to get my sleep. So how much do you average on social media? Maybe like an hour a day. And how many hours of sleep do you average during the week? Like eight or nine oh. hours. Oh, so. you're, you're the only one in the group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm getting like four or five hours of sleep a night. But I'm working a part-time job, so I'm working 20 hours a week. Plus I'm going to school full-time, so I have 12 units of homework and work. And like paying my bills and stuff like that. So like, to be able to keep my grades up, to keep my job, keep my house, all of this stuff, like... I have to I have to be busy, like I have to be doing stuff. But I'm completely used to it. I in high school I was in the A B program, I was an honor roll student, I played four different sports, I was in three different clubs, so I'm used to being able to go, 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 go. And do you ever catch up or you just don't need to? Sundays. Sundays are my sleep day. Ah uh, <laughs> Okay, I will not call you on Sunday morning. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What about you? How hours on social media, hours sleep? I just use it whenever I can when I'm walking, just on my phone, probably like an hour and a half. And I sleep, I think I sleep nine hours, because I don't really have any early really classes. Oh. I these classes like two hours. So I have time to sleep. Yeah. I personally, I think some social media is a, it's okay, but I feel like if you get wrapped into it, then you do become self-centered and so, like, I do participate a little bit in social media, but I don't like to uh, put myself on a pedestal or I'm number one and everybody else is inferior to me. I do think some of it is like not necessary, but it's okay to have. Like I'll glance at it sometimes, but like on a daily basis, probably like an hour. Um, in regards to sleep. Um, I have class tomorrow and Thursdays at, I have to wake up at 7 o'clock and my first class at 8 and then my last class ends at like 10 and then I'm done for the rest of the day. So usually the days I get the most sleep are Tuesdays and Thursday nights and then I catch up on the weekends but on a, like average I get like 5 or 6. Um, could, could we just go around and say what you're majoring in? Uh, I'm majoring in computer engineering. Majoring in child development? Computer animation and game development. Biology pre credential So you'll be a teacher? I want to be a high school biology teacher. Oh, wonderful. I'm currently undeclared. What are you thinking about? Uh, I'm not sure. I have a lot of different options. Like what, what are you, if you had to pick two tomorrow, what would they be? I was thinking about probably construction management or something more like working with animals. Ah. I'm animal science going into the pre vet field. Oh, wonderful. You guys are great. Um, anything else that you want people to know about your generation or about activism or anything? It's all about how you raise your kids. If you raise your kids to be open-minded, they will be open-minded. But if you raise your kids in a life of bigotry and racism, they will become bigots and racists. And they will become narcissistic. So it's all about how we raise and how we educate the youth. It's like you're not born racist, you're taught it. And you're not born narcissistic, you're taught it. You're not born a bigot, you're taught to be a bigot. And we have to, te I think we need to teach future generations that it's good to have role models, but you have to pick them wisely. Yeah, I agree. Parents are like the, what influences you the most. And also knowing and being aware that everyone is human and that everyone...